welcome to another reading vlog or a vlog of sorts i guess i have finished quite a number of books since i last talked to you they're all sitting up here waiting for me to film my wrap up this week um i literally just started this one this morning i've only read the preface so far but it is agua viva by clarice lispector um i'm so excited to read this so many people have said it's amazing and have recommended her works to me this is the one that i have and i'm gonna read it right now. I'm gonna read a few pages of it right now at least and see how it goes. I have a whole bunch of stuff to do today, namely I just want to get people's Christmas presents organized and um, most of my Christmas decorations are up. And then if you sit right here in the reading chair, I love that you can like see the Christmas tree and a couple wreaths in the background because it's very cozy. I'm gonna read the first few pages. It is quite a short one which is good because I think this week I want to I don't really have a themed reading blog because it's something I really need to do and catch up on, but my Goodreads goal is of course drawing closer and closer. Um, but tomorrow is the first day of December, so I have a month to complete it. By the time you see this video, we will of course have shared our exciting news, the dark academics, um, our December winter festive holiday plans. But I'll also be sharing my TBR in this vlog, I think, once I have it figured out. This morning, I'm actually doing something a little bit different, but I thought I would just sit down and film it anyway because at least I'm I'm very, very excited about this. But for the past few days and like weeks, honestly, I've been wanting to get back into flutes and start playing again because I miss it so much. It's been such a long time. Um, it's been years since I've like really dedicated time and energy into getting good again because I used to be really good because for years, for like three or four years, I would play for hours and hours every single day. But um, obviously then I went into uni and then I got a concussion and then just things, you know, I just didn't pick it up for a really long time. But I have recently just missed it so much and have wanted to play again and get good again. Starting some New Year's resolutions a little bit early, but I literally have scores and scores and piles and piles of music to go through. To maybe sort them. I know I have a lot of, oh, so, so many Christmas pieces and so much of it is from band because when I was playing the flute a lot, I was in band, I was in full orchestra, I was in jazz band. Um, so like there's just a mess of music to go through. And I at least want to pick out a few pieces to play and learn to get good at again because I miss them. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So this is the first stack. Yep. Okay. So I don't know if I'm going to go through them all with you guys because that's probably not exciting. Or maybe it is. I don't know. But first up, we have Siciliano, which yes <laughs> i'm gonna put that in the want to play and a practice and learn again pile that was an exam i had this music right here this piece is so important to me it was one of my final exams that i chose to play but um it's fancy c by george hugh i absolutely love 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 this piece um this is the one that I probably practiced the most. This was when I was like at <laughs> the peak of my flute playing career. Um, so I do want to learn this again and get good at it again. So I'm gonna put this in the pile as well. We have the swan theme. Oh, Sonatina, I loved. I almost picked this one for the exam as well. It's quite, it's a very long piece. Oh man, so long. I just really like the first, the first part of this, honestly. Maybe not though. Maybe for later. <laughs> the swan, of course, I'm gonna keep the swan. I absolutely love it. It's so battered. I've played it so many places. Um, I'm gonna keep that. I wanna relearn that. Flight of the Bumblebee, I think maybe, no, maybe not yet. Oh, I think now we're getting into some elementary school stuff. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, we have the Nutcracker Ballet. Oh my God. Okay. This is, this is a funny one. This one is from elementary school. This song, I literally whited out the title at the top because I think I got embarrassed about it or something, which seems silly to me now, but this song is the whole reason I wanted to learn how to play the flute, um, at least when I was like, how old was I, 12 or something, when you get to choose your instrument. Um, this is a song from Pokemon. It's Lugia's song from the Pokemon movie. Um, it's not originally played on flute, I believe it's played on ocarina, but 
I really, really wanted to learn it. And then that was like the whole reason why I picked the flute. So I was still at the point where I had to write down the note names, but I love the song so much. And anyway, we're gonna learn it again, why not? Alright, so I just got back from my walk. I feel very scammed. There was a snow warning. We have a snow warning. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to go out there right now. Experience the snow. But when I went out, it wasn't at that point yet. And it was all just heavy rain, if that makes sense. Like right before turning to snow. But now, as I'm looking out the window, I can see the snowfall that was a very not fun walk and i feel so scammed because now it is snowing so much but now i'm just chilled to the bone i'm freezing i cannot get warm so i'm gonna go throw all my clothes in the bathtub because everything is just wet and then i'm gonna put on my pajamas and make some hot chocolate maybe because i'm
happy about this. I'm back in this little, very enclosed cedar tree place, but it's actually really warm back here. Um, I could stay out here for hours and hours just sitting here. Um, I wish it was like this all the time. <laughs> Hi guys, so as you can probably tell by this bread loaf, I am at home today. It is an extremely snowy day. I think I said yesterday. Today's my dad's birthday, so I came over, but um, it looks like I might be staying the night because you probably saw the clips of the snow, but it is snowstorming extremely. We have like a snow warning. <laughs> I think I already said that, but a lot of snow came down, so I don't know if I'll be able to make it back home tonight or just have to spend the night here with this little with this little chicken nugget. <laughs> I'm just so thrilled and happy with the snow. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think in a little bit, I'm gonna be taking little Miss Evie out for a walk. My mom currently has an apple crisp baking in the oven. It smells so good in here and we're gonna be decorating the tree tonight. So it's December 1st and I am about to finish an audiobook. I have I think about two, two more hours left on it, but I'm loving it. It's a book by Philip Pullman. I don't think it's a wildly popular one of his, but it's called Count Karlstein and I'm loving it. It is hilarious, but it's also quite spooky. It's this weird gothic tale with so many elements of weird humor. It's kind of like a slapstick comedy with horrific gothic things going on in it. It reminds me a lot of Monty Python. It kind of just feels like a compilation of sketches um, featuring vaguely gothic fairy tale mythological things because we're kind of following these two girls named Lucy and Charlotte and they live with their uncle Count Karlstein up at the castle but he wants to I guess cement his power and his hold as the rightful heir of the castle it's kind of like a tranto I don't know but he is gonna try and do this by making a deal with Zamiel who's also known as the demon huntsman who I guess rides through the forest and kills everything on all all souls eve i think so then we're introduced to this huge cast of characters for this small book but it's like perfect it works so well and so far it's just been such a well-written funny tale i'm adoring it the audiobook i would really recommend because um the narrator is really really good at <laughs> all the different voices and i'm loving it it's also set in the winter it's set in switzerland i believe so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I also brought Agua Viva with me. It's like right there. So I'm probably gonna try and read a little bit more of that today. I'm also working on getting my thumbnail and my video out for tomorrow, which is my winter book recommendations video. So yeah. All right, here is the tree. It is a real, it is a real tree. I don't know if you can tell, you can probably tell. There's even pine cones in it. I'm very excited to decorate it. It smells amazing in here. Where do you want to hang him? Do you want to hang him somewhere? Okay, go hang. Gentle, gentle. Right. Are you a loaf of bread? <laughs> Are you a loaf of bread? Oh my gosh, there's hair on your nose. There you go. Do you like Christmas? Is Santa going to bring you something? What's Santa going to bring you? Is Santa going to bring you a squirrel? It's a little bit later now and we're just about to decorate the tree, but a few things actually. I just realized that um, there's 40,000 of you on this channel. That is really cool. That is so cool. Um, thank you so much. I would continue making any and every single video, even if there was only one person or one of you on this channel, just because I simply adore making videos. But the fact that there's so many of you here um, with me is just incredible. So thank you so much. Very overwhelmed when um, someone commented on one of my videos. So thank you so much. Also, the second thing is that on my bookshop tour, a whole bunch of people, it's so fun. It's so fun watching people make friends and then being able to make friends with all of you guys. But a few people were asking for kind of a, I don't know what to call it, like a discord channel or a discord server for our kind of little community. And maybe 
I don't know, maybe probably different segments for like group reads or suggestions or just to get to know each other and make friends. So I think that is something I'm going to be working on very soon. It shouldn't take too long to set up. So I will, of course, let you know when that is live. I'll put it in the description box. And um, if you guys have any ideas for channels that you want added or things you want to talk about or discuss or any ideas for our Discord server, let me know because I'm very excited about that. One of the last things a lot of people have been asking me literally for months and months and months if I had a P.O. box, if I was setting one up, if I could set one up. And so finally, I finally, finally went out a couple days ago last week and set it up and it is all ready. I'm very excited. I've never had a P.O. box and um, I'm just happy that I finally went and did it because it was in the back of my mind for a long time and so many people kept asking. So that is also down in the description box, um, the P.O. box details and everything like that. So that is finally done as well. I'm going to get on the Discord thing very soon. And there's one more thing. Oh my gosh, what was the last thing? Oh, this week as well, very excitingly, tomorrow actually, December the 2nd, is going to be my four-year vegan anniversary of not eating animal products, of being vegan, and all of that stuff. So I am finally also in the process of remaking, I guess, or making another one of my what I eat in a week videos um of course vegan and stuff like that so i hope that will be out very soon because i am filming that this week i just thought it would be fun to do it on like my four year week and just see um how that goes because i've been meaning to get that out to you for a while now as well and a lot of people always ask for um food content and vegan content so i'm very excited but that was a whole bunch of little updates in a very short period of time so i will now go decorate this tree eat some apple crisp I hope you're all having a very fun first of December. I'm very excited for the season and the winter. All right, cool. I have my tea. So let's talk about books. This morning, I had about five minutes left on Count Karlstein by Philip Pullman. So I just finished that one off. I really, really loved it. I gave it four stars. I think I might look into getting the actual copy of it because I believe it comes with illustrations, which would be amazing. But yeah, like I said, it was just so funny <laughs> um, and so interesting. And there were so many storylines for such a short book, but Philip Pullman arranged it all so perfectly. Um, it was actually one of the first children's and middle grade books he wrote. It was the first, I think, because he originally intended it to be a play to be performed by his class, actually, of English students that he was teaching when he was an English teacher. So that's really interesting. It came out, I think, 1982, but I really liked it. I have to say I really liked it. So I'm so glad my first Christmassy read is a good one because there was lots of snow it's set in the winter it takes place over the course of three or four days leading up to all souls eve which i was talking about so i really really loved it okay but to talk about the masterpiece agua viva i literally only got through 12 pages of this since i picked it up but wow um there's so many things i could say about this number one is that it's definitely a book i need to take my time with because there's a lot going on and definitely Clarice Lispector's writing, her writing style um, is one that really, really requires your utmost attention, all of your focus, all of your energy, and you really, really have to be there 
with her i think particularly in agua viva even though i haven't read anything else from her yet but uh i really want to and i've only read 12 pages so far so the bat calls it an unordered meditation on the nature of time and being and life but a lot of this so far or at least what i'm getting from it is that it is so focused on the nature of the instant in which things are how do i see this like the putting down of a moment that is just a moment and there's no ableness to latch on to the present moment because the present is by its very nature something you can't have for any longer in that one little instant not even millisecond in which you have it and that is what Clarice Lispector in here is trying her hardest to show us and to grab onto these vibrations that make up life and kind of this question that can you ever experience a moment or your life. One of the things I think kind of helps to explain it a little more is the quote that starts off this book. She also talks a lot about painting um, within Agua Viva as of right now. So the quote is, there must be a kind of painting totally free of the dependence on the figure or object, which like music illustrates nothing, tells no story and launches no myth. Such painting would simply evoke the incommunicable, incommunicable, incom <laughs> Such painting would simply evoke the incommunicable kingdom, thank you, of the spirit, where dream becomes thought, where line becomes existence. So, I thought this one was really nice too, and kind of seeing a little bit of that theme and how um, trying to experience yourself or anything in the present moment is a little bit of a futile act because the present is the instant in which the wheel of the speeding car just barely touches the ground and the part of the wheel that still hasn't touched will touch in that immediacy that absorbs the present instant and turns it into the past. I, alive and glimmering like the instant, spark and go out, alight and go out, spark and go out. So far there's a lot in here that's reminding me a little bit of some ideas and some philosophy and some works of T.S. Eliot in particular. There's a little bit of Rilke I see in here. And what was the other one? Maybe Samuel Beckett? Samuel Beckett? Endgame? Maybe. Maybe. I think this is going to be a super interesting experience. I'm so excited. I'm only on page 12, but I think right now I'm going to sit down and read a couple more pages at least because it's only 88 pages long. So yeah, I'm really, really loving this though. Because I finished Count Carl Stein, I started another audiobook. I started Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Very excited. This is my first James Baldwin book um yet although i've heard a lot about him and a lot about him in other collections i've read this year i really have no good idea of what giovanni's room is about other than that we're following this young man named david it's set in the 50s in paris and he's reminiscing about his life about his time growing up with his father and his aunts and his relationship with this man named giovanni so those are my reading updates i will try by the end of this week to update you on the dark academics readathon i'll put our bingo board um in here somewhere probably tomorrow because i'm very excited for the readathon i think it's gonna be a really cozy fun one it's a very chill little slow meandering monthly thing so nothing big nothing huge nothing stressful um so yeah i think right now i'm gonna go stretch maybe work out a little bit and figure out figure out what i'm gonna read for our readathon hi guys it is friday welcome to friday i have a lot of things to talk about before i close off this vlog i have some reading updates i also went to the bookstore tomorrow yesterday oh my gosh i'm exhausted yesterday i went to the bookstore because i had to pick up a couple books for the dark academics book club and of course right now i will also tell you what my december tbr picks are for the bingo board which you can find up on our instagram page as well if you would like to save it or look at it or do any of the prompts yourself with us for the holiday of fun um we would love that and of course i will be doing them so i thought i would go through them mention them all say what books i'm doing for them anyway i'm just going to talk for a little bit i hope you're cozy um i hope you have enjoyed the vlog thus far but as for agua viva i'm now 16 pages through um, this is actually insane. <laughs> it's a very insane, crazy book in the fact that like, just like g genius kind of crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like her writing is actually, wow. Like it, there's a lot, lot going on. Let me see if I can find a few other 
um, places have just been incredible. This one I've absolutely loved. Uh, so writing is the method of using the word as bait, the word fishing for whatever is not word. When this non-word between the lines takes the bait, something has been written. Wow. Wow. I love that topic of exploration. Like obviously the word doesn't refer to exactly what you want the word to refer to or what you're using the word for what you want it to refer to. And like that essentially nothingness that is in that between because there's obviously like an association, a reference, a sign to something else if we're talking about the word specifically and like Clarice's vision of that in here and like what she's trying to do to connect to those instants I think is so um, incredible. And then also just this last one, there's a lot of like really intense one line sentences. Um, time is the duration of a thought. There's just a lot in here that like you read and then you just have to stop and consider it and you can't really go on because your brain is just struggling along and muddling through um, what she's laid down for you. So still loving it. Not very far through. This is definitely one that I'm trying to take my time with. So loving it. Absolutely loving it. I've been trying to get my bangs like all week to do this cool swoopy side thing, but like they don't really listen. Anyway, uh, what else am I reading? Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. It's uh, really good. The writing, first of all, just to speak on the writing, beautiful. Literally so beautiful. I think this might be a book, Giovanni's Room, that I'm going to try and just get a physical copy because I think by the time I finish it, I would like to own it. The writing is beautiful. It punches you in the face. The whole story just punches you in the face because, uh, wow, I don't think I even said what it was about. We're following our protagonist, David. He's an American. He's come to Paris and he's forming this life-changing relationship with this man named Giovanni. Definitely want to say I don't like either of our protagonists. I do not like David or Giovanni. That's not really the point, but there's so much in it that is so heartbreaking because David is someone who is struggling so deeply and so violently and so shamefully with his sexuality and with what he's doing in Paris with Giovanni and other people and he has this whole group of friends and throughout the whole book what David is telling us we know from the start that something awful has happened to Giovanni and it's presumably because of something David has done but we don't really know how this event has unfurled yet and the whole book you're just going through and there's so much guilt that is just so suffocating surrounding David and what he's doing to Giovanni and to himself because obviously it's the 1950s and these are even bigger and tougher um, things to deal with and thoughts to deal with and events to deal with within yourself, especially coming from someone like David who essentially goes to Paris to find himself but ends up losing himself in Giovanni's room. The whole imagery and symbolism and the whole setting of Giovanni's room, it's just the, the room where Giovanni is, is so fantastically done. Um, whew, there's a lot, there's a lot going on in this book. The whole time you're reading it, it's just almost as like you can't look, you don't want to know what's going to happen because there's something awful that is coming and that like is this place where David is writing from um, retrospectively and it's just this kind of like you don't want to look but you have to look, you don't want to hear anymore but you have to hear more because it's written so beautifully in the way that it just kills you and it's so tragic. However, there's definitely a lot of misogyny coming from both David and Giovanni, like just blatantly in the things that they say, it is quite horrific. And I know that goes along with the part of the story that's being told there, but I don't know yet if it's gonna be um, expressly addressed. All right, so now I will put up our bingo board. Here it is, designed again by the lovely, beautiful Carolyn. Big shout out and thank you to her once again. She always just puts so much love and energy and work into um, our graphics and stuff. So here it is. Um, I'm going to show you what I got yesterday because they are our two group books for December. Um, if you haven't heard on the gram or anywhere else, we are reading two books. Uh, the first of which is a very new release. I'm incredibly excited. I had to go out and get it because my order was actually cancelled. So I had to go into the store. Um, it was the quickest book shop of my life. I just ran in, got what I needed, ran out because things are starting to get quite busy um, now that it's December, but it is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Here it is. Um, she is stunning. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. If you cannot tell, this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1926 Shanghai, and we're following, of course, two gangs. I believe we have the White Flowers on one side and the Scarlet Gang on the other. I did start this today, and I am a whopping seven pages through. I'm on chapter one. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna think of this. A lot of the time, young adult is a complete miss with me, but I'm really hoping that the Shakespeare element, along with kind of this historical element, um, and the fact that it's set quite far in the past, will definitely help me like it more than I normally would. So we shall see. So that is our first group book. And then this one I got yesterday as well. I wasn't actually meaning to um, pick it up, but I saw this one, and this is uh, a reproduction of the first edition of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It's so pretty. It's got like gold, gold edges, yeah. And then if you open it up, it's all green. And uh, then it even has a little bit of like Charles Dickens writing in it. And it also comes with some illustrations. So I've never read A Christmas Carol. I am extremely excited. And finally for the prompts, the first one is to read a book with snow on the cover or in the title. Um, and so for this one, I've chosen the audiobook Red Riding Hood. I think it's by Catherine Hardwick. I really, really hope I like this. Of course, the cover is just bedazzled with snow, but the last Little Red Riding Hood retelling I read was Red Hood by Lana Kate. Arnold and I hated it so much. Um, so I'm really hoping Red Riding Hood will be a bit better. I'm sure it can't be worse. <laughs> Red Riding Hood does feel like a very wintry kind of Christmassy fairy tale to me. So that is the first one. Next we have the prompt to read a book with romance in it, kind of an under the mistletoe prompt. And I think as for right now, it is going to be Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, the book I'm currently reading because it is a book about romance and love and tragedy. Um, however, I am hoping to find more books about romance soon because that's a very Christmassy, spirity holiday thing as well. I did actually DNF a romance that I started because it was really, really bad. It was called Tourist Attraction. Um, and I'm just now realizing that what they did there. I did not see that before until I said it out loud um, by someone. I forget who the author was, but the premise was like this girl comes to Alaska and falls in love with an Alaskan local, um, but it just was not very good at all. It's quite cringy. And then we also have the prompt to reread an old favorite because Christmas time is very nostalgic. You want to get back to what you love. Um, I don't know if this qualifies as an old favorite, but I read this last year, fell in love with it, head over heels. I feel like I meant heels, heels. Wow. I feel like I mention this all the time, but it is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. This could also be used for the prompts of romance because there is of course the relationship between Elizabeth and Victor and yeah there's just a lot going on in this book. Uh, I know it's being turned into, I don't know if it's a movie or a tv series, I think it's a tv series. Um, if anyone is out there listening I would love to be in this. Please, please cast me. Um, I could do it. I will do it. I will do it for free even. But yeah, when I read this last year, I absolutely loved it. Not sure if it's going to stack up to my opinions now, but we're going to find out, I guess, because I do have the audiobook on hold once again. I think those are finally all of my reading updates for right now. I'm feeling quite exhausted, so I think I'm going to go have a nap. I'm feeling quite anxious, so anxiety always makes me feel exhausted. Um, so I'm gonna go have a little sleep, hopefully, and then um, get on to reading more of these Violent Delights and Agua Viva tonight, I think. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all doing well and keeping well and warm or cold if you like being cold because I much prefer being cold, but I'll see you very shortly in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all so much. Ciao.